The church has to regain its voice. We, the church, have been given responsibility first in Genesis and then by Jesus. Like Joshua, to go and possess the land. Like Jesus said, go to the ends of the earth and preach the good news. But I believe that the church has become absentee landlords of the garden that's been placed in our hands. And in doing so, we have been given permission, we have given permission to this undeclared war. We have given permission to this genocide that's going on and snatching the lives of our children. We have given permission to this violence epidemic that's taking place in our communities. And we have, I believe, settled, I believe, like Peter and James and John, to stay on the mountain of transfiguration, to bask in the glory of the presence of God, and forgotten by leaving our Sunday services is what we're called to do. That we're not called to come to church, we're called to leave church and make church happen in the communities in which we live. We have forgotten what tells us after the Mount of Transfiguration that there are brothers and sisters that said we're waiting at the bottom of the mountain for the church to come down and hear the cries of the people. We have forgotten, like Dr. King said, that our job is not to simply ask what it will cost me if I'm the good Samaritan and the good neighbor, but what will happen to the man on the side of the road if I fail to do what I'm called to do as a church? So what do we got to do? Three things. First of all, we have to go out in the streets. There are thousands of churches, synagogues, and mosques all over Chicago. What are we doing in our churches, synagogues, and mosques while people are dying in the streets? We have to go out in the neighborhood, go out in the street. If every church, synagogue, and mosque took one night a week, had your Bible study outside instead of inside, and created a presence in the community, we wouldn't need the police department. The church would be blanketing the community with justice and peace and the love for our children. We have to call our neighbors back out of our homes, behind our blinds, behind our locked doors, hoping it doesn't come to your house. Well, it's going to come to your house sooner or later. We have to call them out on their porches and their front yards to engage them, to empower them, to take back their block, to be the presence of their block. And the church has to lead the way. We can't keep coming up in sanctuaries and realizing and saying that God is sovereign and omnipotent and almighty, but we're afraid when we go out in the street, the same God in the church is the God in the street, and it's time for the church to lead the way from fear to faith. The people are afraid because the church is afraid. It's time to talk to our young brothers and sisters. Not be afraid of them. Put our arms around them. I watched Isaiah Thomas last night take some of the worst gangbangers off his 79th Street, take them and hug them, and said, I love you, brother. I watched them melt. I watched tears come in their eyes because they were valued, and they said somebody loved them and somebody cared about them. Society has told our children that they're not worth anything, and that's why they believe they're not worth anything. Let's stop asking why they don't value themselves. They don't value themselves because we as a church and we as society have told them they're not worth anything. The church has to go back out and dust the dreams. Dust the dreams off of our young people who've forgotten what God called them to be. We can't simply just sit in our churches and preach about destiny and about purpose and not help our children reach the destiny. And we've got to draw the line of what's not acceptable. The church has to be very strong on the streets. It's not acceptable to shoot. It's not acceptable to kill. It's not acceptable to have guns in your hands. God gave you a mind. The church has to preach that message. The police come after the fact. The church should be the one preventing. The police should never get a call because the church was already on the battlefield. Churches, number two, must lead. and must be the lobbyist, the lobbyist for the community. We're the ones that are supposed to be lobbying for the jobs. We're the ones that be saying to the mayor, to the governor, if jobs are coming to Chicago, bring them to Englewood, bring them to Lawndale, bring them to Auburn Gresham, bring them to Rosen. The church has to be the lobbyist for education. The church should be the one saying, we're great to Whitney Young, but we want a Whitney Young in every single neighborhood in the city of Chicago. The church has to be the lobbyist. The church has to be the lobbyist against the gun industry. How dare we tell the politicians they're afraid, but the church won't even speak up against the NRA. The church has to demand the mental health be given again to our brothers and sisters. Don't just let them wander the streets, hopelessness, and off of medication. The church should be the lobbyist for mental health in this city. The church should be the lobbyist to address violence 
and demand resources from the federal, the state, and the city. We must be the voice. Thirdly, we must train our members. Every Sunday in churches and synagogues and mosques, there are people sitting in our pews. Our job is not just to get them saved. I'm tired of hearing, Doc, how many you get Sunday? It's not about getting them in the kingdom of God. It's about making the kingdom of God happen on earth. What do we do after we get them saved? Saved for what? Train our members to be organizers. Train our members to take over their blocks. Train our members to be agents of change. Train our members to break the code of silence. Train our members to get the guns off the street. Train our members to be the church, to be soldiers. We're not calling Christians, we're calling soldiers to get trained up in here in the huddle and then go out those doors and make a difference. Our soldiers in the church and the synagogue and the mosque should be the ones confronting bad stories. Our soldiers should be the ones dealing with abandoned houses. Our churches, our soldiers should be the ones to deal with negative influences. It's time to train and empower our members. The organizing ought to happen on Sunday mornings. It's not just get them excited. Excited for what? <laughs> to go back out into a hell in our streets. We need to train our members to be the Mary of Bethany's that break open their alabaster jar and change atmospheres in their home, on their block, in the marketplace, in the workplace, wherever they go, change the atmosphere. Scripture says the judgment's going to begin with the church. Yes, it will. Yes, it will. For it's time for the sleeping giant of the church and the synagogue and the mosque to wake up and become once again the spiritual landlords of this thing God put in our hands. He didn't put it in the president's hand. He didn't put it in the governor's hand. He didn't put it in the mayor's hand. He put it in our hands, but we have dropped it.